with all of the frustrations and quarantines and worries and every other little thing or big thing, as the case may be in 2020, I wanted to take a moment to reflect on what has happened this year that is good. I wanted to take a moment to reflect on what has happened this year that makes us feel tremendous gratitude. If you're listening to this in real time, it's Thanksgiving Day of 2020 here in the United States, and me and my team and probably everyone you're about to hear is spending time with their family and loved ones. So we're bringing you a very special episode this week where we asked some of our favorite guests from the past 12 months to tell you about what went right for them in 2020. Because I don't know about y'all, but that's what I need in my life at this moment. Some grateful reflection on the things that are fucking fantastic in our life, even still in a moment like this. Happy Thanksgiving. I'll see you inside the episode. Welcome to Small Stage, Big Impact, where we are dismantling the idea that big is better by showcasing the wisdom, courage, and kindness of tiny companies having a massive impact on the communities they serve. What does it look like to run a small company with kindness at its core? How can digital influencers break up with grow marketing and manipulative sales hacks that compromise their values? What does it really take to shape a digital footprint with empathy, equity, and accessibility at the center of the strategy? These are the questions I've been asking myself over the past several years. In season four of the show, we're speaking to digital activists, upstart developers, badass content creators, brave community leaders, and even a few Instagram influencers to answer these questions and more. Hi, I'm your host, Lorena Carcillo. I'm a veteran SEO nerd, digital strategist, and recovering know-it-all. Over the past decade, I've spent way too much time feeling frustrated with digital marketers making excuses for their bad behavior. So we're here this season to help you learn how to do better at digital. No tripwires, sales hustles, or soft closes required. Join us every Thursday morning for Small Stage, Big Impact, Season 4. Sustainable courage for leaders who want to do better digital. The fantastic women who have shared their gratitude statements with us for this episode are from all walks of life. They live in rural areas and large cities on the East Coast of the United States and the West and everywhere in between. They run different types of businesses from ones deeply rooted in local community to those rooted in online communities that bring people together from spaces and walks of life and places all over the world and from every socioeconomic class. And they have each one of these four been an inspiration to me in ways large and small. Some of them I have just connected with over this past year and others I have known for a very, very long time decades even. And I am very excited to share what went right for them this year with you and my reflections on a few of the things that they had to say. So I want to start out with my friend, yoga coach, and often lifeline, Danielle Rush. She's going to share with you a thing that just made me stop and take a deep breath and feel into exactly the thing she was saying about how she is grateful for the time and intention to understand what is most important. So I encourage you to sit quietly and take a deep breath while you listen to Danielle, because I can tell you from my Wednesday morning yoga that nobody is better at helping you relax than she is. Here's what she's grateful for this year in her own words. This is Danielle with Red Life Yoga and Wellness. 
I am most grateful for time, the time that I was given to focus on what I love the most. 2020 gave me the ability to slow down and love myself, my family, my clients, and my students, and my work. I'm grateful for the technology that allowed me to continue to work with clients one-on-one and in small groups. As the year closes, I'm full of gratitude for time. How often are you feeling gratitude for the moments when you are doing exactly what you want to be doing? Take a moment and ask yourself, are you spending your time the way you want to? Oh, now that you've had a deep breath, it might be a good moment to come back around and think about our business and what impact it has had in the world and on our lives over the past 12 months or even longer or shorter than that, depending on the circumstances that you're in. And I have to say that what Elizabeth D'Alto, our next little gratitude statement that we're going to hear from has to say, feels pretty damn good for me. You'll hear why in the first couple of words, but also is super important she really roots us into getting the support that we need. And I think if you take the time that Danielle suggested to really get clear about what is important to you, the next step in order to manifest that into the world is to get support in ways big and small, particularly as a woman and a female entrepreneur, that it's so difficult to get sometimes. And the intentionality of leaning into finding circles of support where you can be your whole ass self, well, that's pretty powerful. I'll let Elizabeth explain why and what it's meant for her all year this year, leaning into getting the right kind of support in every aspect of her life and her business. Hey y'all, this is Elizabeth Dialto from the Institute for Embodied Living, and I'm super grateful for Rena this year. Rena is at the top of my list of things that I am grateful for. She helped me with a total website upgrade, revamp, and overhaul. I'm super grateful for my team, and that's all business-related stuff. As well, I'm in deep gratitude this year for the full range of friendships that I have in my life from people who are just super kind and thoughtful and get my sense of humor to people that I can go deep with in, you know, mental and emotional and life and activism and all these different topics that are so important to me, uh, to the people who sustain me day in and day out as I navigate my own life as a business owner and as a person who really gives a shit about the world and as well to people who really help me in my business. You know, this year, something that I leaned much more into is finding business peers, colleagues and confidants to jam with and to, you know, be in arms with as we grow and really learn to sustain ethical businesses. So I'm super grateful for all of that and still being here after such a wild and crazy year. Maybe if you're feeling right now like you don't have the support you need or like 2020 has been so much that you're just not sure if it's worth it anymore to go on with your business or that project that's been with you for so long or whether it's worth it to pursue this thing that you just can't quite get off your mind, well, if that's you, Kronda Adair has a message for you about what it means to keep moving and what could happen when you do. Let's hear it. Hey, friends. This is Karanda with Carvel Digital. And this year, I'm grateful for so many things. It's really been a great year for my business, despite or because of, in some cases, the circumstances that we find ourselves in. And I'm just really glad that I didn't quit, that I kept going when things were pretty bleak. (laughs) And I I wrote down just some retrospectives of, of how did I get here? Because I had to go through a lot of things. So I'm really grateful I didn't quit. I'm really grateful for the clients and the business friends that I have this year. 
I've never had more fun in my business than I have this year. Um, I've never had better, more awesome clients that I'm just have so much fun working with. And I'm really grateful for my wife and the people in, in my family who've supported me because it's not, it's not easy to be married to an entrepreneur. So um, she's really had to endure some things as well. And I would say that, you know, if you're trying to get in touch with your own gratitude, you know, it starts by really noticing what's going well. And one of the things we do in our coaching calls with my clients every week is we share wins. And some of them, that's a new practice, but what you focus on grows. And so if you can get into a practice of noticing your wins every day, something goes right for you every day. So take the time to notice those, you know, start a gratitude journal, take the time to write those down, be intentional about really spotting those and noticing them and being grateful for them. And as you develop that practice, you get better at it and you start to notice more good things and then more good things start to happen and it just grows like that. So I hope you're having a beautiful holiday wherever you are and take care. The longer I am walking around on this planet, the more I am convinced that being willing to move forward, like Kronda said, even when you're not sure and maybe you should quit is one of the keys to happiness. And another, my good friend and sometimes coach Lori Bainham is going to talk to you about next. This idea of standing in our personal power, even when it makes others think that we are, well, frankly, kind of weirdos. It's such a beautifully huge and I think sometimes overlooked thing. And it's funny for me to say overlooked because I feel like I spend so much time talking to people in the coaching and personal development space who speak about personal power constantly. And yet in our day-to-day lives, it's so easy to step out of that space and not show up as our full, whole-ass selves. And so what Lori has to say about that, I think is so important. And I am so glad that she said it because nobody has taught me more about this topic in my life than she has. So let's hear from Lori about standing in our personal power. Hello, small stage, big impact. Thank you so much for asking me to share what I am grateful and thankful for. This is Lori Bainham. And I can honestly say it's taken me a while, but I not only like who I am. I really love me as the human being that I am starting to realize that I am. Hope that makes sense. I really am very grateful that I now know how to stand in my personal power. I also know when I'm not standing in it, and I'm thankful for that too. And I'm very grateful uh, to know that you know we're all vibratory beings. We have, we live in a very vibrational, energetic environment, this world around other people who are vibrations and um, balls or bubbles of energy. And I just feel thankful that I understand um, my own, how my own vibration affects my outcomes and how it affects other people and how it affects um, those people that can be very helpful to me. And I get um, some amazing opportunities because of that. I also uh, now appreciate that when people might find me different or maybe even an outlier or think from a, 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 a different perspective, I find that as a huge compliment. So thank you for that. And my advice to business leaders is keep developing yourselves and embrace who you truly are. Hopefully you're loving who you are and um, that will help other people do the same uh, as you lead by example. Uh, This creates natural synergy and healthy work environments and work relationships. And that's what it's all about, being your best self and making the best things happen and having a good time while we do it. So here's to the upcoming 2021. As I listen to the words of these incredible women from so many different viewpoints and places in their lives, it makes me feel not just gratitude, which I am full of in this moment for these women and others like them. It also makes me feel 
so much hope. The world has been pretty dark in many spaces and moments and times and places this year, y'all. I don't have to tell you that. I know from the conversations that we have with each other that you're all feeling it, and so am I. And yet when I listen to the words of these women, when I listen to you, when you share what's going on in your world and what you're doing with me and with our team, I feel hope, not just gratitude, but hope and belief that there is a brighter and kinder and more compassionate future ahead of us. It fuels me to do what I do every day. And it fuels me to show up and talk to you here every week. And it fuels me to make very tough calls in the world and to look at myself and ask questions every day. If I am having the impact that I believe is necessary and needed on the world around me, on my community, and even the larger world. And it is because of women like the four who have shared with you here today, I feel not like I am standing on the shoulders of giants, but like I am a giant standing shoulder to shoulder with other giant personalities and whole ass women, arms linked side by side. We don't have to stand on top of each other anymore, right? We can stand beside each other, arms linked, to form some kind of a like cheesy but beautiful chain that brings more hope and empathy and kindness into the world. And even with all the problems on Thanksgiving and and about the made up history about Thanksgiving on a day like today that's what i want to stop and be grateful for all of these incredible women from those who have shared with us today to our clients to the listeners of this show to the ones that i don't even know about out doing their work in their communities to provide a better kinder place to work to provide a more equal and liberated place for us all to live. If our impact is our legacy, women like you, women like these, women like us, if I dare say, well, we're going to leave a pretty damn fine and exciting legacy. And I know this year has been dark in so many ways, But as I listen to this episode back, as I'm recording this conclusion, I just have to say, I am so full of light right now. I am so full of love right now. And I hope that when you listen to these words, I can give a little bit of it to you because we're doing it, y'all. We're making the world that we want to live in moment by moment. I love y'all. And we'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to Small Stage Big Impact. If you enjoyed the show, please show your support by reviewing us or rating us on iTunes. And follow Lorena C. on Instagram. This helps others seeking to do better digital to find us and support the movement. For full show notes, transcripts, and resources mentioned in the episode, visit us at realignyourstrategy.com. Thank you for listening. We'll be back next week.